Melissa Lockhart may want to roll it up after watching the Giants. We have her on the morning rolls from the Athletic. Melissa, good morning. Welcome to she the don't morning rolls. Uh, Joe Shasky to put Jared <laughs> Ponte Hill. Well, speaking of grass, how can you go through? How can you watch a Giants game without? Rolling up some grass. And I know this is a weird way to start a conversation, <laughs> but damn it, I may need something harder than grass watching this team right now, Melissa. Yeah, it's a lot of avert your eyes, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well said. I know we want to talk about the farm because I'm not a tapped in on the farm system. I think we both are. And look, obviously, this team is a long way away from being on the level of the Dodgers or the Braves or whatnot. And we keep hearing about the prospects. So, you know, just... When is this going to turn over? Where's the farm system at? Let's start with Luciano because that seems to be the big name. And boy, there's a lot of pressure on him when he does finally get promoted to the big league club to produce. Where's Luciano at? How how long will we have to wait for him? How long do you think his timeline is to get to the big league club? Yeah, I mean, you know, unfortunately, he's been out for like the last five weeks or so as a back injury. Um, he was having a great season with high A Eugene. I think he was doing everything that you would have hoped he would be doing. He's young for that level, and he was still one of the best players in that league. Uh, and I think he was pretty close to a promotion to double A when he got hurt. So obviously that's been a big setback just in terms of not having those reps. It doesn't really impact the long-term you know, outlook for how good a player he's going to be, and I think he's still going to be a really, really good player. Um, but certainly that has delayed how many upper-level at-bats you would hope to have seen him get by the end of this season. So um, there's still a couple months left in the in the season if he's able to get back uh, soon, and I haven't heard a, a recent update on what they're estimating with that. But um, if he's able to get back pretty soon and, and get up to double-A for a month or two, you know, I think there's still an outside chance he's seen by the end of next season. Um, but 2024 is probably the most realistic time frame for a, a player like that to take everyday reps. Wow, 2024, wow, that's a man, it's a long way away. It's a lot of pressure, too, on him, no? I mean, it feels like he's being asked to be the, the savior of the organization. I, you know, I look at the 49ers and, and the Golden State Warriors as I contrast, and they're young guys, even though there's a ton of pressure on all of them, they're not asked to carry the organization. It feels like Luciano is basically being asked to be the centerpiece of the organization. That doesn't even seem fair. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's had a ton of pressure on him ever since he signed, so I think that's not um, anything new for him. You know, he signed a huge uh, bonus when he, um, you know, first joined the organization. There was a lot of attention on him. He's been the guy on every team he's ever played, and so not only, you know, are his teammates looking to him to be the best player, but the other teams are kind of focused on him when they're planning out, you know, how they're going to approach the team he's on and everything. So um, he's handled it incredibly well. I think his makeup is one of the things that makes him a very special player. He's a, he's a very smart kid. He's somebody who has already developed a lot of leadership skills. You know, that being said, it, it, baseball is so different than those other sports. Nobody mm-hmm. can be the guy that carries an entire organization. I mean, you, you know, even Barry Bonds, right? Like, right. Couldn't bring World Series by himself to the to the Giants. So um, he's going to do what he can control. Um, but I think that if he turns into the player that you think he's going to turn into, um, there, there's a good chance that he's one of those guys you see on the banner outside of uh, Oracle Park for a long time. Melissa Lockhart, Athletic, here on a morning roast on 95.7 The Game, breaking down the Giants' prospects as they lose their fifth in a row coming out of the All-Star break. They get shut out by the Diamondbacks 7 to nothing last night. Did not look good. A lot of platooning. With Joey Bart looks lost at times. He's getting pinch hit for by Yaz. So it's a lot of ugliness. So we're trying to figure out who's the next wave of Giants coming up. And, you know, a, lot, a name I hear about is Kyle Harrison. I want to get th- to him in just a second because he seems to be on a fast track, Melissa. But what about Luis Montel's outfielder that we've heard a lot about? Last time I checked, last week he was batting 174. What's the latest with Matos? Yeah, you know, he got off to a really, really slow start, and then he got hurt, um, and so it kind of took a little while for him to be able to get his feet back under him again. That league that they play in in the Northwest League is, you know, up in the Pacific Northwest. They had rain every single series for the first two months of the year, and it's not an excuse, but it's, it's, it was a difficult thing because they kept having rain outs, and it was hard to get a rhythm. And I don't think he'd ever played in cold and rainy weather in his entire life, um, coming from where he came from. And so, you know, I, I think it, he's also even younger than Luciano, so I think it was just a slow start. He's been much better the last three weeks. He still is that player when he um, 
is swinging right that gets everybody really excited. I don't think he was ever going to be on a fast track, just given how much younger he is than the rest of the level. Right. But he's got incredibly special bat the ball skills. Um, he's got power. He's got speed. You know, he's the kind of athletic player that you don't see on the current Giants roster that a lot of these younger prospects that they hope to be able to see in a few years, um, you know, would sort of turn that tide over. So uh, I don't think anybody's giving up on, on Luis Matos. What, what do you think? 2024? 2025. He is 20, like Luciano Kyle Harrison. I know he's a little younger than those other two guys, but what do you think about him? Sounds like 2025 with the way you just broke that down, Melissa. Yeah, I mean, you know, you never know how people advance once they get to double uh, A. I mean, I think that's the big thing, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, the low A level, high A level is very, very different from double A, and then it's, again, very, very different from triple A. And you look at like Elliot Ramos, I mean, and the progression that he's had. It's it's sort of a similar deal uh, with Luis Matos. I think um, you know Ramos was very young when they drafted him out of Puerto Rico as well. Mm-hmm. So um, you know you're you're kind of gauging it on how the player is reacting to each level. Um, I I think anything is possible once he gets into a rhythm. You know he could catch up and, and end up getting there right around the time that Luciano does, or he could be you know a half season or a full season behind. It really just depends on how he's doing once he gets to Double A. You know, it feels like the the lack of pitching coming through the organization really forced their hand in, in free agency, and that kind of got them on this overspending spree after the World Series. So I'm really interested about where their their farm pitching is right now. Kyle Harrison, obviously the gem of that. Bednar, Jelly, how would you rate these guys right now? Because it feels like Harrison is one of the most promising pieces they've had since Lincecum Bumgarner. Yeah, I mean, I, I would rate the pitching as the strength of the system right now. I know really? we were just talking about position players, but and, and their younger arms again. You know, I think part of the frustration is that people are hearing about, oh, this is a really strong farm system on the rise, and yet none of them are getting to San Francisco right now. But that's just sort of a, you know, kind of a product of where the system was at coming into the year. The best prospects were in A ball, and you know, being in A ball doesn't really let you get to the big leagues in that season, but. Um, you know, they led the world in strikeouts last year uh, as a pitching staff. Um, they're, they're striking out a ton of guys again this year. The walks have been up a little bit around the system, but there's a lot of really high-quality arms um, up and down the system. Kyle Harrison, I think, you know, you can make an argument he's the best left-handed pitching prospect in baseball, certainly one of the top two or three at, at the very least. Um, and, you know, there's there's a lot of promise in the guys that they just took as well in the draft. So um, they've shown an ability to be able to move pitchers, I think, a little bit quicker, mm-hmm. um, especially the college pitchers they draft than, um, than the hitters. And so I, you may see some of those names uh, quicker. I also think, you know, coming into the trade deadline here, there's going to be a lot of teams very interested in the pitchers that the Giants have to offer mm-hmm. in deals. Um, and while maybe they don't have a package to like necessarily bring in a Juan Soto or something, you know, they certainly have the players to acquire, you know, players to help them if they want to try to add on in the next couple of weeks. And that pitching depth is, is certainly. Um, you know, where I think they would find a lot of those deals. Uh, you know, Melissa, we're talking to Melissa Lockhart, athletic, breaking down the Giants prospects here on the morning roast on 95 7 the game. Melissa, when you talk about the deadline here, the Giants are now 48 and 48, and the process is losing a lot of fans. The process over the player, the platooning or whatnot, and the way the club is being ran. Don't you think it behooves the Giants maybe to just stand pat at the deadline, considering that, hey, 48 and 48, they have a lot of injuries. They have this farm system that they've worked so hard over the last three years to replenish and build up. Maybe the best case scenario for them is just to stand pat or maybe sell off a couple pieces on the big league roster. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's funny. I, half of my job is is uh, copy editing, and I I edit uh, Grant Brisby, who I think always has got the the best pulse on sort of what the Giants should be doing one way or the other. And he's uh, had some pretty compelling arguments for standing pat recently. Um, you know, I, I think the thing is. Winning in baseball doesn't come around every year. You can plan for it. You know, you can um, you can try to have like a five year window where you think everything's going to fall into place. But if you have a chance to make the postseason, it's still fairly rare. And you, you know, you should probably try to take advantage of that as much as possible if you think it's fixable with a couple of deals. Now, depending on who's available. Um, on the market, Farhan might be looking at this and thinking, there's not a lot I can do to the roster as it's currently constructed to make them that much better, in which case standing pad or even selling would make a lot of sense. But if there are a player or two that would actually, you know, change this sort of um, configuration of the lineup, change the defense enough that it would, you know, make a really big difference, 
you know, then I think it's certainly worth it because, it, you know, as the Giants are the perfect, you know, franchise to, to tell you that you don't have to be the best team entering the postseason to win a title. And so you've got to give yourself a chance if you're going to get in the postseason to have one of those sort of magical runs that gets you a title, you know, even if you didn't have a 107 win season as, as they did last year. Right. So um, I, I think it really depends on where uh, other teams are at in terms of what they're offering and what they're asking for the players they're offering. And unfortunately we never know, <laughs> you know the people sitting outside the room, what those deals potentially are. But um, you know, if there's somebody who could, you know, come into the middle infield there and really make a difference with their defense or come into center field and really make a difference with the outfield defense, it may be worth looking into. Yeah, they just need to get more athletic. I mean, geez, yeah. Louise, I got, I want to see that. Melissa, you're very well informed. I'm really enjoying this conversation. Can we rat a tat tat a couple of names here that I've just, sure. I've heard a lot about? And, and it's tough to follow. I'm a diehard Giants fan and I'm more tapped in on prospects now than I have been over the last decade. And it feels like I know nothing about these guys. What happened with Elliot Ramos? You know, he's young, and I know that people hate this answer, but, like, he's, what, 23 in AAA. It's really his first season there. He got, like, a month and a half there last year. Um, it takes guys time, and, and, and baseball's hard. <laughs> There's a real, mm-hmm. you know, people ask all the time, mm-hmm. why is it in the draft that guys don't go right to the big leagues the way they do in the NBA and the NFL? And it's because baseball's harder than those sports to get really good at being a major league baseball player. And he's still very talented. There's things that in his game, especially with pitch recognition and stuff that he needed to work on that he is working on. Um, but it, it just wasn't going to be this year yeah. for him, um, as it turns out. So I, I don't think you give up on him entirely, but okay. I think asking him to be the sixth is not probably going to happen. And, and what about two former first-rounders, Patrick Bailey, the catcher, who we kind of believe if Bart's not the guy, maybe this guy can be who's been struggling, and then Hunter Bishop, the local kid. I had high hopes for both of them. Yeah, I mean, Bishop has looked much better, uh, you know, especially over the last couple of months. He, he was a little banged up at the beginning of the year, but, um, you know, his OPS has been on the rise. He's still that power speed guy that you would like. He, he needs to control the strike zone better, um, but that was always going to be his issue. So um, it, getting him healthy and getting him reps, you know, I think is the most positive thing. Um, so, I, I, you know, I keep an eye on him. He is a very athletic defender as well, mm. so it's that's certainly somebody who could help them down the road that way. Um, that Bailey's been a bit of a mystery, to be honest. I mean, he's not been nearly as polished, especially at the plate, as I think he would have expected coming out of the draft. Right. Uh, that said, he's played pretty good defense, um, and he's shown it in flashes, so I think we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, right now it's been kind of disappointing. Melissa, you're a rock star. I mean, I mean this, is, let, let this me is unbelievable. Let me ask question here. <laughs> like, the reason they brought Farhan in was to replenish the farm. Right. You know, five years or so ago. Are they better off at identifying, developing, nurturing, and bringing up talent than they were five years ago? I think so. I mean, again, it, it's a little hard because it takes a long time for farm systems to turn over, and mm-hmm. I think five to six years is really what you're looking at. So you aren't seeing the returns at the big league level yet, but I think you will. And, you know, even last year, right, like, they don't get Chris Bryant without a better farm system. You know, Caleb Killian came out of nowhere to be the kind of centerpiece of that deal. And um, that that's something I think maybe they haven't gotten quite a, enough credit for yet. But um, I think you will start to see it. It was a big process. Um, I, you know, I, I really like how they draft. Um, they were very creative with this year's draft and the guys that they picked. 8,000 pitchers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they were picking last in, in every single round, and it's tough to find talent. <laughs> they went out and found some really interesting players at each of those spots. So um, it, it, it requires a lot of patience. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a big believer in Farhan. I've followed his career since he first started, you know, with the A's back in, in, in his front office time. I think he's building a foundation that will, um, you know, bear fruit. But I think they kind of jumped the gun a little last year and how good they were and perhaps mm-hmm. the expectations were higher than people probably um, should have had. But um, but I do think it's on, on the right direct trajectory. Melissa, that was awesome yeah, stuff. Yeah, really Awesome, awesome in. stuff. We'll do it again soon. Continue the great work at The Athletic. Thanks for Absolutely. the time this Thank morning. You. Thank you. Anytime, wow. Melissa Locker at The Athletic. I mean, Got everything I needed to know. So current current profile on every right. single guy that we wanted to hear right. about.